I love you. <laughs> a mad, passionate love. And I love you because you have published my favorite magazine. I am truly grateful for this pure and delightful magazine that has brightened the lives of countless girls like me. That was a quote from a letter to the editor by Nikhat Naz, a devoted reader of the Urdu women's magazine called Pakiza Achal. And a passion of this degree tells us that this magazine means something powerful. And yet, Pakiz Anchal and others like it are often disregarded in literary circles for supposedly lacking serious value simply because they cater to women's tastes. My research challenges this dismissal. Working at the intersection of English and sociology, I analyze over 20 issues of select Urdu women's magazines alongside in-depth interviews with their readers to trace the recurring themes in popular literature that reflect and shape the everyday lives and identities of North Indian Muslim women. Now, Urdu magazines among Muslim women are cult favorites, engaging thousands of fervent readers across the world. They offer everything from poetry and love stories to religious advice and discussions on women's health and social issues. They also offer women a space to share their thoughts and stories, such as debates on Muslim women's rights or reasons why men should help their wives with household chores. <laughs> In fact, a reader once told me that Paki Zanjal is like a companion to her. This, has, this sense of connection is echoed in the letter I opened my presentation with. When Nikhat declares her mad, passionate love for the magazine, she is not just praising the content. She's expressing how women like herself have found in its pages sisterhood and a sense of belonging. Besides, the trope of the passive and silent Muslim woman is so tired. We do not need to be spoken for. What we need is an inclusive academic framework that centers the nuances of our lived realities. And so, by documenting these overlooked cultural archives, my research repositions the women I work with as narrators of their own lives who employ literature to assert their voices. Besides, oh, and yes, my work in this manner achieves two objectives. Assigning scholarly value to women's reading practices to help rethink Indian Muslim women's representation in discussions around gender and identity. So, if we want to see Muslim women the way they see themselves, which is the only right way to do it, we must turn to places where they have been speaking all along, declaring to the world, I love you. Thank you.